Do filament dryers actually work? That's the question everyone's asking, and I'm here to answer it. What's going on everybody? I'm Just G, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be testing out this filament dryer by Fix Dry, and I'm gonna be putting it to the test. I'll be testing out the temperature accuracy, the spool size, does it fit the big plastic spools, and does it fit those cardboard spools that everybody is switching over to? And finally, I'm gonna be doing a sound test. Is it gonna be quiet enough, or is it gonna add that extra noise that you don't want next to your printer? All this is gonna help me determine if it's a yay or a nay. Fix Dry sent me over this filament dryer to test and review. This is not a sponsored video, and all opinions are my own. I just want you to know that. With that being said, sit back and enjoy this review. So for the past week, I've been a little sick, so if I sound a little nasally or different, I am so sorry. Huh, this video would've came out sooner, but you know. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what we got. So my first impressions when I first look at this filament dryer is that it's really nice. It's small, compact, and sleek. This will fit basically on any desk that you have next to your printer. It houses a plastic front casing that's very glossy. There is no, there's no pill on the front of it. So I'm already starting to get fingerprints on it. On the back, we have a matte black finish. We got our on and off switch, as well as our information for plugging it in, safety and all that other good jazz. On the very front, we have a temperature recommendation settings for basically your main type of filaments. We have your PLA, PVA, PP, TPU, ABS, ASA, PETG, and HIPS. I don't know what HIPS is, just being honest. Then we have our PC and nylon. I don't see anywhere for other filaments like carbon fiber or anything like that, but I'll go ahead and leave a list down in the description where you can go and you can see all the recommendations for different filaments like carbon fiber as well as wood and all those weird different filaments, okay? I'm pretty sure you can use those with these as well. Also in the front, we have our temperature knob that you can turn and boy, that is a satisfying knob. It's not clicky, but it's just smooth. It's a smooth turning knob. It feels really good. One of the things I do also notice is on the front, the humidity sensor is already on and it's showing 39% humidity. I live in Georgia, so we're pretty humid over here. But that being always on and not plugged in means it has a battery in the back. So that's something that you're probably gonna have to change every two to three years or so. You shouldn't have a big part worry about that battery. Okay, if we open it up, the top cover comes right off and it's a little, it's basically, it's a tinted glass and it's magnetic. So it pops on and off. Very easy to get off if you ever wanna change your filament. Inside we have our instruction manuals with some PEG tubing, it's like all PET. You know, the little tubing that goes to your dryer from your, your printer. That's pretty cool that it comes with that. Inside you have two rollers, if you can see, to sit your filament on. And you have a heating element. On the back, you can see that there's a fan. So once it starts heating up, it'll circulate all the, the heat around so you'll get an even heat on your filament, not half of your filament's not gonna be heated up, you know. The rest of it is all gonna be heated and dried. So overall, my first impressions is it's really nice, it's really compact. Also, I just forgot about this. Also, it has a hole in the front and the back. So no matter which way you put your filament or wherever you sit, your printer, say I'm the printer, you'll be able to feed your filament from each side. So there's no wrong way to actually put the filament in there. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and hook this up and I'm gonna run off a print and do some test printing. Okay, so after running some tests on the filament dryer, so I've used the filament dryer before and this was actually a lot easier to set up than the other filament dryer. It was plug and play. I fed the PTF tubing through and then I fed the filament through that tubing. 
and then I was able to run a print. After an hour, I saw a dramatic drop in the humidity in the humidity sensor. I did add my own probe into the actual casing, but because it got so hot, it actually got to around 135 degrees, I wanna say, Fahrenheit that is, and it actually broke my probe. But it did reach 110 before it shut off at 10% humidity. That's what this actually stopped at, 10% humidity as well when it was printing. So it does do a good job of removing the humidity and it does dry out the filament. I went ahead and used a, a temperature probe while it was printing because the, the other one broke and the filament reached around 125 degrees. So that being said, it does do the job of warming up the filament. Here's where I ran into an issue and I always run into this issue with my filament dryers because I sit it down and I feed it through the tubing and it has to go up and around onto the printer at the very top. It usually gets snagged because the holes are here. I would like to see different variations of this and maybe they do have this and different filament dryer options, but I would like to see two up here and two at the bottom. That way, no matter where I'm feeding the tubing, if I had it up high and I was trying to feed it down low, I'll have it here. If I was had it down low and I wanted to feed it up high, it would be nice to have one up top. That just gives you some options of where you want to place your filament dryer. That's one of my critiques. The filament gets snagged and the printers don't like when the filament gets snagged and then it starts making noise and printing. So my print failed because the filament got snagged, but that's not the fault of the dryer, more of just placement and you know, quality of life things that I need to do. Minus that, I did a fast print and the print came out pretty good. I'll do like a little slow-mo. I did snap off one of the legs trying to get them unhinged. So it's all no head and no leg, oh no. As far as noise goes, it wasn't very loud. It, it ran around 20 to 25 decibels. I mean, I have, a, I have my light that's right here and it's about the same temperature with its fan. So you can even hear it on speaker. It's not very loud. I'll, I'll have a sound bite that I'll play right now so you can hear it. So as you see, it's not very loud. You won't have any problems. It's not annoying. Another issue I had with this filament dryer, when it got up to temperature and it was nice and hot, the glue holding the magnet actually came off. So every time I pulled the top off, the magnet stayed on top of the dryer. That can be fixed with some glue of my own, some super glue. It's not such a big deal, but that was an issue that I did running into this dryer as well. So here's what you guys wanna know. Are filament dryers worth it? Do you wanna go out, spend your hard earned money to buy a filament dryer? Well, the answer is, where do you live? Do you live in the climate where you have to deal with humidity? I live in the South, I live in Georgia, and it is very, very humid in the summer. So when I'm printing and I have open filament packages, they are gonna absorb a lot of moisture and it could ruin your print. That's just another, another factor that you have to add into to the already crumbling of, is it the right uh, G code? Do you have your printer set up correctly? Now you have to worry about, do you have to have clean and dry filament? Yes, you do. If you live in an environment that is very humid, then yes, I would recommend you get a filament dryer. I've already purchased one in the past because of this issue. So getting another one, especially one that's a budget friendly option, might be worth it. So this was my review of my filament dryer, the fixed dry filament dryer. It's really, it's, it's nice. I really like it. They have different options. You can get the dual filament dryer where it has two spools. They also have a touchscreen version too where you don't have this knob, even though this knob is very satisfying. They have one that is a uh, fully touchscreen that you can use as well. If you can think of any other products that you want to see me review, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. If you like this video or learned something, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and turn on that bell notification so you can see my next videos coming up. I also review the best budget filament. You can go ahead and click on that video right here. That's it for me. Have a great rest of your day. God bless you. Peace out.
Shit, you should hook up the boy for the boogie, no, 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 no,